Hello and thank you for watching my video. My name is Astrid Krasnici. I'm CCNA and CCMP certified instructor. In this video we are covering chapter 7 EIGRP which is part of CCNA semester 3 scaling networks. Objectives for chapter 7 enhanced interior gateway protocol EIGRP are section 7.1 characteristics of EIGRP in here we should be able to describe the features and operations of EIGRP then we move on to section 7.2, configuring EIGRP for IP version 4. In here we examine the different EIGRP packet formats. Then we move on to section 7.3, operations of EIGRP. Calculate the composite metric used by diffusing update algorithm, Dual. Describe the concept and operations of Dual. Then we move on to section 7.4, we configure EIGRP for IPv6. Here we examine the commands to configure and verify basic EIGRP operations for IPv4 and IPv6. Okay, let's get started. Section 7.1 Characteristics of EIGRP Enhanced Interior Gateway Protocol or EIGRP EIGRP is a distance vector routing protocol. Enhanced EIGRP is a Cisco proprietary routing protocol. It's released in 1992. EIGRP was created as a classless version of IGRP. So previous protocol was IGRP, but that was a class full. So EIGRP was enhanced version, it was a classless. EIGRP will act like a link state routing protocol, but it's still a distance vector routing protocol, or you could say advanced distance vector routing protocol. In 2013, Cisco has released the basic functionality of EIGRP as an open standard to the IETF as an informational RFC. Cisco will continue to maintain control of EIGRP. Main components of the routing protocol. So we have a data structures, routing protocol messages and algorithm. So routing protocol uses messages to learn and maintain accurate information about the network. Specifically messages are used to discover neighbors, routers, exchange routing information and other tasks. So we discover enabled routers, exchange information and other tasks. For example, the EIGRP first we should we use hello messages to discover our neighbors. Once we discover the neighbors, we can update the neighbors without whatever we know. If we want to know something, we lost track of some route or something, then we can query our neighbors. Then our neighbors will send a reply and we have acknowledgement. These are routing protocol messages for EIGRP. Routing protocol creates and maintains tables, database, in a RAM for its operation. So some of the tables that we create and maintain are neighboring table. So when we discover our neighbors with the hello messages, we maintain that table, whatever neighbors we have discovered. And then we have a topology table. Whatever the neighbors are advertising us to us, we add it on the topology table. And then we pick the best path from the topology table and we submit it to the routing table and we keep this on the ra random access memory so it's a volatile and same the neighbors will do the same then we run the algorithm routing protocol use the algorithm to determine the best path to various destination so for example in the topology table we have three or four paths to the destination then we can run the algorithm to find out what is the best path to get to that destination and when we find the best path then we take that and we add it to the routing table Features of EIGRP Uses diffusing update algorithm or Joule for short. Does not age out routable entries. So when we add anything that we have in topology, they will not age out. Does not use a periodic updates. So for example, like RIP will send updates every 30 seconds. EIGRP no. Once we have learned our routes and if nothing has changed, we're never going to send that update again. Maintain a topology table separate from the routing table includes the best path, loop-free backup path, if any. So now, EIGRP will keep whatever the neighbors are telling us, we put them on the topology table. That is different from the routing table. We pick the best route from the topology table and we add it to the routing table. Here, that is called best path. EIGRP has one more advantage, advantage to other protocols. They has a loop-free backup path. So for example, we pick the best path, that's a primary, and we pick the second best and we keep it as a backup just in case our primary fails. It has a faster convergence, equal or unequal cost load balancing. For example, 
if you can go to the destination through path A and B, and the, the, the metric is the same, then we can do, that's called equal load balancing. And we can send them 50% of path A and 50% through path B. Unequal load balancing means that, okay, even if the metric is not the same, we can do unequal load balancing. For example, we can send 75% through path A, maybe that's a faster link, and 25% through path B. No other protocol can do this. Partial and bounded update. Partial updates only includes information about the root change. When there's something changes, we just send the update about that information only, nothing else. Bounded, we send the updates only to the affected routers. Uses protocol dependent module, PDM, to support different layer 3 protocols. EIGRP key components are protocol dependent modules or PDMs, reliable transport protocol RTP, neighbor discovery or recovery, we're going to talk about later, and dual finite state machine, which again later. Protocol dependent modules, EIGRP will maintain individual table for each routed protocol. So if we have IPv6 neighboring table, we have a IPv6 neighbor. If we have IPv4 neighbors, then we keep IPv4 neighboring table. So each protocol that we have, it will maintain a table for it. EIGRP uses protocol dependent modules to provide support for IPv4, IPv6 and legacy protocol like IPX and Apple Talk. For example, whatever neighbor table we have, we keep another topology table for that protocol. So that whatever neighbors in IPv6 are telling us, we keep a topology table for that, for those neighbors. Then well, for us, but whatever they're telling us. Whatever the neighbor table from IPv4 they're telling us, we keep another topology table for IPv4 as well. Like successor, feasible successor, or the primary path, the backup path. Each protocol dependent module is responsible for all functions related to specific routed protocol. Then we take whatever is in the topology, we add it to the routing table. EIGRP, Reliable Transport Protocol, or RTP for short, so reliable packets require explicit acknowledgement from destination. So when we say, when we send an update packet, query packet or reply packet, we do require acknowledgement, which is that forms a reliability once we get acknowledgement. We do send unreliable packets with EIGRP as well, which are hello and acknowledgements. They don't get acknowledged, so they are unreliable. RTP can send EIGRP packets as unicast or multicast. IPv4 EIGRP multicast address is 224.0.0.10. IPv6 EIGRP multicast address is FF02 colon colon A. Now sometimes these numbers is hard to remember, especially in the exam time. So for example, do you remember the RIP? It was 224.0.0.9 and FF02 colon colon 9. Now EIGRP, for, e for e easy for you to remember, think of EIGRP as an advanced routing protocol, advanced distance vector routing protocol. So advanced A, right? So EIGRP for version 6, the, the multicast address, FF02, colon, colon, A for advanced. And then A translates to 10. So think about, yeah, 10 was A, advanced. I hope this will help you. So you don't confuse them. IPv4 for EIGRP multicast address is 2240010. EIGRP does support authentication, can authenticate the routing update sources. So we are authenticating where we get an update from. Are you supposed to send us the update? Not actually what's inside the packets, but we are like we don't encrypt what's inside the packets. We only authenticate the sender. Ensures router only accepts routing updates from legitimate peers. Authentication does not encrypt the EIGRP routing updates. EIGRP packets. EIGRP relies on five type of packets to maintain its various table and establish complex relationship with the neighbor routers. Right? First packet type is hello. This hello packet type is used to discover other EIGRP routers in the network. Then the second packet type is acknowledgement. Used to acknowledge and the receipt of EIGRP packet. Now, for example, those two packets are unreliable. The RTP sends them as unreliable. We do not need acknowledgement for those two packets. The third packet type is update. Convey a routing information to a known destination. If there's something has changed, we send an update message. 
update now if I go back update message will get the acknowledgement so this is a reliable packet then we have a query it's if for example it's used to get a specific information from a neighbor router for example if we lost a network if we lost a path to the network we will query our neighbors and those they will send us an update now those two that query is uh, acknowledged as well the neighbors everything that we query we should receive a reply the reply every query we send we should get a reply for it used to respond to a query EIGRP hello packets hello packets are used to discover form adjacencies with the neighbors they are multicasted to 224.0.0.10 again don't forget this IPv6 FF02 colon colon A hello packets are always sent unreliably therefore hello packets they do not require acknowledgement before any EIGRP packets can be exchanged between routers EIGRP first must discover its neighbors EIGRP routers discover the neighbors and establish adjacencies with the neighbors routers using the hello packets hello packets are sent on regular interval now routers assume that as long as it's receiving hello packets from a neighbor the neighboring and its routes what he knows from it are viable the interval depends on the interface bandwidth for example in the low bandwidth it's every 60 seconds default interval on multicast non-broadcast multi-access network and BMA such as x25 or frame relay ATM interfaces with the access link of T1 or slower so 1.544 or slower then we send every 60 seconds in a high bandwidth is every 5 seconds default interval on circuits with a bandwidth greater than T1 such as Ethernet LAN so in the slow link we send them every 60 seconds on a fast link we send them every 5 seconds hold time maximum time the router should wait to receive the next hello before declaring the neighbor as unreachable this is default is three times hello interval so for example if we send hellos every 60 seconds the dead time is or hold time is 180 seconds or if we send hellos every 5 seconds the hold time will be 15 seconds if the hold time expires EIGRP will declare the route as down the neighbor as down and it will remove all the path so dual searches for a new path in the topology or by sending out queries EIGRP packet types updates and acknowledgement packets so when the network goes down for example R2 lost at that network it will notify his neighbors it will update the neighbors so it will contain only the routing information needed what that change has occurred send only to those routers they require it and uses reliable delivery so EIGRP uses triggered update when something changes then I notify my neighbors they send to the neighbors now the neighbors what they need to do they need to acknowledge send yep we got that update send when reliable delivery is used Eat either update query or reply they will be acknowledged unreliable unicast so acknowledgement will be sent unreliable it's unicast not to 224.0.0.10 directly whoever sent that update query packets now once once I updated my neighbors they know that I lost the net network I can query my neighbors so maybe they know how to get to that network so used by Joule when searching for a network and other tasks queries and replies are reliable delivery so we send the query our neighbors are going to acknowledge they're going to say yep we got the query wait a few seconds we're going to reply to it so queries can use multicast or unicast where replies are always sent as unicast reply packets so once we send the reply then we're going to get acknowledged that we have received the reply all neighbors must send the reply regardless of whether or, or not they have a route to the downed network because replies also use reliable delivery routers such as R2 must send an acknowledgement so when R1 and R3 they need to send that reply of the query if they don't then they will be in something called stuck inactive so why a query? another router could be attached to the same LAN EIGRP message EIGRP message on the Ethernet segment, the EIGRP packets are encapsulated in a frame with a multicast address 01 
005E000A of our advanced, yeah? The IP packet header contains the multicast destination address 2240010. The protocol field is 88. This field indicates that it's EIGRP. The data portion of the EIGRP message includes the packet header and the type length value, or just for short, TLV. The EIGRP packet header identifies the type of the EIGRP message. The TLV field contains EIGRP parameters, IP internal or external routes. So we are sending it to the multicast address. So source address of sending interface. The destination multicast is 01005E000008. The packets, the source is itself. The destination is multicast address of EIGRP. Then the EIGRP packet header. On the header, we can identify what is, for example, what is the AS number to start with and what type of EIGRP packet is it. So, opcode, EIGRP packet types. Update, it's got one. Query, if it's a query, gets a three. If it's a reply, gets a four. If it's hello, it gets a five. Autonomous system number, ID for this EIGRP routing process. Now, with the EIGRP, they have to match this autonomous system number for two neighbors to become neighbors, they have to match this. So if it's one, EIGRP parameters, if it's two, it's internal root. If it's three, it's inside. What's in that packet is external root. Thank you for watching my video and hopefully to see you in section 7.2, configuring EIGRP for IPv4. Bye bye.